Welcome to episode 123 of the Concealed Taco Dudes podcast. Woo! One, two, three. One, two, three. Or 123. Oh. Hey, 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 no swearing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tonight we have me, Taco. Jason with Concealment Solutions. Gene, Gunsmith Extraordinaire. And Stan. <laughs> and his Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he's got to say is... With sugar. Stan. Mm. Real sugar. Real yeah. sugar. It's smooth. <clears throat> smooth. So we have uh, today lots of uh, listener feedback that we're going to go over. Good. We haven't done that in a long time. And we have lots of what we did with guns or <clears throat> what, what I did, did with what, guns. This episode will be, what did Taco do with guns? <laughs> But uh, anyways, right. should we knock out some sponsors? Yes, let's. So we are at the NOE studio, yes. NOEbulletmolds.com. They are the finest bullet molds on the planet. And he's got some cute ones in there. Yeah. Some very cute bullet designs. So I came this uh, Tuesday to pick up more of the stock pieces that he makes for me. Mm-hmm. And there was a guy here, and I, I brought him my... Talon P with my stock on it, so because he hadn't seen yeah, one. Yeah, so you see it. And so this is what you're making, you know. Yeah. And he had a guy in his office who is starting up a air air gun slug company. He's going to be making <laughs> slugs. He's from the, like Midwest Missouri or something like that. Aren't those like called that? pellets? No, no, not slugs not and anymore. Pellets slugs are and pellets. Dan. <laughs> anyway, he drove out here to meet with. Al, because he wants Al to make his molts for him and stuff like that. Gotcha. And so we were talking, and I just thought it was funny that there was another air gun guy here, and he looked at my stuff. Oh, man, these are, you should market these. I'm like, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the think? idea. <laughs> What's that? Did you give him a card? Uh, you know what? I didn't have a card on me, but uh, we did We did talk. But I just you swapped digits, did you? We did. We awesome. Did. But uh, so it's not just us, is my point, saying <laughs> that Al makes the best bullet oh, holes yes, out yes. there. It's he's got a reputation in the in the industry. That's for true. sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's not just us here in Utah. They, Air yeah, guns are huge, you know, as judged by the. Uh, the competition they have oh, yeah. here. The yeah, well, well I was talk- I'm talking Al's bullet molds. I know, I know, but, so, uh, but air guns are huge. That guy's going to sell a ton slugs are, of air gun slugs. When we first started getting into the air guns, there was little rumblings about slugs and this and that, and every year it seems to be gaining momentum. Yeah, so. some of the big cast bullet companies are, are offering slugs now. Yeah, there's they're not, terrible, but they're they do offer. <laughs> there's there's not a whole lot of difference depending on the caliber between a, in theory. A, in, okay, okay. In theory, in, the ones I've a handled bullet and a, um, a slug you shoot out of your air gun. We there there is okay. Yeah. They do make air guns that shoot <coughs> like the uh, what is it the bulldog that shoots <coughs> the three fifty seven mm-hmm. like handgun. <coughs> oh, it'll. So yeah. they're designed specifically. That to one shoot is designed to shoot a cast, yeah. bolt. cast hand handgun bullets. Oh, three fifty seven. I did not know that. Yeah, but the ones I've handled, um, I got a box of cast bullet. Um, what is it? Cast bullet hunter supply or something like that. That were air gun Specifics. slugs. Okay. And these things were terrible. Oh yeah. Like the quality control on those, awful. Huh. And I've had I've used their bullets before, and their bullets were excellent. So I don't know if they if this was just a bad batch or if it was uh, hmm. or if they just don't care as much because it's for a, a an air gun. It's not for a real yeah. gun. I don't so know. Who but, cares? Yeah. What what diameter? What caliber were they? They were forty five. So oh. four fifty one. Really? And because because the larger the bullets or yeah. slugs yeah. or whatever the they easier are, they are to cast. The easier they are yeah. to cast. The the most difficult ones to cast are the like twenty two caliber yeah. like slugs or pellets. Yeah. The and that's what I expected. Pellet with a hollow point. Yeah, that is the <laughs> that is the most difficult. That's the only, style to cast. That's yeah, the like, only mold I have. <laughs> yeah, I, I know the thirty twos with a hollow point. Those are those are tricky. Yeah, but uh, because it's mold, that you have to maintain the mold block temperature, and with so little lead going inside the mold, oh, it doesn't. It cools off too fast, yeah. and so you have to pour like a, like you have this tiny Lots little bullet inside, and you. 
cover the the sprue plate with sprue just to just to, yeah, just to keep it hot. Interesting. Yeah. And I know when I'm using the small ones, I can't uh, I can't be running two blocks. Yeah, you got to do it fast. You have to yeah. cast fast to keep it hot. <clears throat> it's tricky. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I'm sure we'll get not there impossible. One day. One day. So. But, but yeah, Al yeah. has wonderful bullet molds. Check them out. Yeah. yeah. FLT001 is the coupon code to save some moolah. Indeed. Black Ice Coatings, I was there this week also. Oh, nice. Same here. With my stock pieces yeah. that, he, that he coated in less than 24 hours. I was wow. like, holy crap. Wow, that's nice. He's, yeah. He is ridiculously fast and awesome. Yeah. He needs to learn how to do plating because I've thought about... You want a you want a gold plated uh, high point or something? That actually sounds really nice. But titan- titanium nitrided, so huh. it has that gold color. Yeah. And I want to do my AK in that. Well. <laughs> titanium nitride. Yes. A gold so you have a AK. gold AK that the you know the you coating order, actually you can actually order those. They, they come from Russia or something. <laughs> so <that's, yeah. laughs> I don't think you can get AKs that come from Russia anymore. I don't know. But yeah, depends on who you are. So I yeah. think that I think that would be really if you're cool. A criminal, you can get anything you want. Exactly. exactly. Or have it nickel boron coated. So it's got that kind of a. You guys made fun of me last time I said, it, but a kind of a dull shiny. <laughs> a dull shine. A dull shine. Yeah. I like the dull shine. Flexibly yep. rigid. Yeah. Hmm. Dull shine. And it gives it that slick. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a really hard chalky. coating. And it's actually chalky. Not chalky. It is it's, kind of. It's, it's not chalky. It's really slicker. smooth. Like it's, if you lick it or what? No. <laughs> Are you talking no, I've got a texture. I've got an AR, the, yeah, the nickel boron. The nickel boron bolt. Yeah. It, yeah, it it's not chalky. Yeah. It's really smooth. I've got a yeah, smooth, it's really smooth like, My daughter's kind of feels... AR is a nickel boron bolt, and it's yeah. like glass. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. That's what you mean by chalky. Stan, I think I think I think chalk is the the exact opposite. It's the antonym of of glass. Stan, have but another it's, it's drink a chalky, of your Mountain Dew. But it's a chalky glass. <laughs> no, <laughs> or a glassy chalk. I'm sorry. I'm just all right. It's just, it's as clear as a foggy day. Yes. <laughs> All right, so BlackEyesCodings.com. <laughs> call, yeah. call Lee and uh, get, a, get a quote for your gun. Yeah. Get it. Or your AR si- bolt. Yeah, Cerakoted or, or Teflon coated or the hydro dipping. You won't be disappointed. Yeah. You tie your guns? We want to talk about you tie your guns? We'll talk about them later. Yeah. Part of the topic-ish. Yeah. What we did with guns. Yeah. I was there today, too. Yeah. I actually did a fun project for them. Oh, yeah? Yeah divulge details about yet but it was then really, why really did fun. you say yeah. anything <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know name dropping yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, that's akin to name dropping it's yeah. project dropping <laughs> stay tuned I, I've been working on this project. top secret project <laughs> yeah. but I can't tell any of you about it <laughs> but it's really top secret yeah, it's, it's really cool it's, it's, it's the coolest really thing I've sharing. ever worked on it, it actually had me excited mm. well and, yeah, there I'm you glad go. you I could share. Saying something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't get excited about stuff very often. <laughs> this one had me excited. Hmm. Cool. I, I did some special things to a stock with some certain special touches for a special. You touch the uh, stock in a special way. Is that yes. what I'm hearing? <laughs> yes. In a special spot. <laughs> in a special spot. <laughs> Please let us know when we're going to hear about this. When can we expect it? Uh, probably by the end of the month. I can okay. tell you guys about it. Okay. Actually, talk about it on air and everything, mm. and share pictures. Oh, yeah. So I, I can't even like I've I've sent the pictures to my mom, and <laughs> that's <laughs> it. That's it. So because she doesn't have technology, and like she has a smartphone now, but she doesn't know how to use it. Yeah. So but she hasn't even seen the pictures. She hasn't even seen the pictures. <laughs> you mean this thing will do pictures? <laughs> Why don't you guys tell me? I thought it was just a phone. When I've told her about the podcast, she's like, what's that? <laughs> what's a pod? Is well, it like a you, Tide pod? Is it like a pea pod that you, ca- how do you cast it? What? I don't. Bless her heart. 
Bless her heart. That's right. All right. Awesome. Well, let's... Use, use coupon code oh, for yeah. Utah Air Guns since we kind of talked about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Air candy, and it'll give you free shipping, free shipping and, turret and stickers. free turret stickers. That's awesome. Yes. And if you're in the Utah, Salt Lake, San Pete counties, drop by uh, their their store. They've got a, a range. You can shoot a bunch of guns. I'm not sure if they have all of them out there, but they've got a bunch. They, they have a bunch the of Utah Air guns? guns. Yeah. Why did you include San Pete County? Just because I wanted <laughs> to throw that out. County. <laughs> or Salt Lake County or Duchesne well, I said or you, Salt Lake or Utah. I was thinking well, Nephi. Or Washington know, if, County. If you're whatever, anywhere in the Mountain West, if you anywhere from that, Montana let's say to, to Colorado, Colorado from, all right, even if, California, if you're from Maine, <laughs> just come swing on here. by. <laughs> come on down to Utah Air Guns and shoot Make a road trip guns. of it. I, just I'm put just, in <laughs> State Street and Orem and your Jeep. GPS and just come on out. I was trying to make it convenient for those people that would be close, but if you're in Canada, it applies to everyone. If just come on down for some warm weather. West, <laughs> come on up to Utah and, drive and shoot their air guns. Uh, if you live in Oregon and you can't own a real gun, just come on out to Utah. Yeah, just come on Utah drive on over. <laughs> it's just a short drive away. Who, who am I to discriminate geographically? You know, well, really. And to be fair, we're talking to a guy that drives hundreds of thousands of miles yes. a week. Every a week. week. <laughs> <Yes>. So <laughs> well, I, I drive clear across the country. I know. Almost two times. So we should organize <laughs> we should organize a fan base of people in every city you drive <clears throat> through to come out and wave, wave as you go by. I think you should. Get on okay. that right now. I think course he'd forget about it, and, <laughs> and he would make the comment the next the, time he's on. You know the weirdest thing happened. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Stan. <laughs> hey, there's another Stan out here somewhere. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. It's it's Alzheimer's. <laughs> and Jason, you know what to do when I have Alzheimer's. And try to take him out to the and desert leave <laughs> and leave him. Put me on a take me. Well, at least put them down. (laughs) Well, no. Wait till it's really, really cold. That's right. Just kick me out. Take my coat away. (laughs) Skyline Drive. Skyline Drive's good. Okay. Okay. It's pretty exposed. I like the Uintas. Okay. I don't want to find you up in Uintas. I spend too much time up there. Yeah. Take the Skyline. for the rest of us. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's a big circle of life thing. I could feed four or five bears easily. Did you you feed them at Skyline? (laughs) <laughs> Interesting fact that you brought to my mind. Okay. Oh, boy. In Tibet, do you know how they dispose of their dead? They don't bury them because most of the year the ground's so hard you can't dig into it. Mm-hmm. Well, they're, and they're climbers on Mount Everest still. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're not talking about them. Oh, We're okay. talking about the locals. Okay. The people yeah. that, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Put them in a pot and boil them? No. Make soap? <laughs> no. Feed them they to have, the monks. They have this hill that they take them to. And the and in the Buddhist culture, you know, you're you're reborn a mm-hmm. number of times and whatever. Mm-hmm. Your body's just a shell. They take the body up onto this hill and they hack it up and let the birds eat it. Hmm. Well, that's that'd be effective. Yeah. Economical. Yeah. You know what? Okay. You have to draw straw. Who's got to hack up grandma? <laughs> Billy, you got the short star. Get up there. I'll be well, honest. I wonder that. if they've got a, like a business, like a whole realm like the, of the like economy. Like an undertaker that, type yeah, of thing? It's the hacker. The yeah. hacker. <laughs> oh, Hackers. Maybe we could start our own. <laughs> they probably have Tibet. guys that do no, it on a regular basis and nope. just use a chipper. Couldn't do it here. A wood chipper. Uh, <laughs> like Vinny down at the docks, you know, he uses a chipper. Yeah. You know, feed the fishes yeah. or, f- they or got feed a them with chunks, you know. <laughs> you know? There you um, go. Yeah. Anyway, I don't care what you do with me, Jason, but we just have an agreement. Okay. Back to this topic at hand. Here we go. Which, yeah. which is listener feedback. Listen, are the we there yet? Moment. Listener feedback. We, we are, are there. All right. So, March Mel. Ahead. Yes. All right. Mel writes in and says, here's a question for you all to ponder during a podcast. Which lever gun would you choose? Winchester Model 1886 in 4082 WCF, octagonal barrel, or Winchester Model 94 in 32 uh, Win- Winchester 32 Special or 32 standard 20. barrel. 
I would take, do it with the 86 every Hold on. Single time. Take into consideration mm-hmm. reloading of the cartridges. Does one have more options or is easier to reload? Hands down, the 32 Special is easier to reload. Brass, Brass availability, is easy. and. But man, bullets? Yeah, there's ton well okay they cast them. so cast so, cast yeah. so if we're doing bullet cast bullets, bullets yeah but if i'm going to cast i'm going to go with the 4082 all day long so brass for the 4082 you probably won't find any in stock native 4082 you'll have to size down 45 45, n- 45 90 brass i got a bunch of that yeah and i don't have to worry about it accidentally getting into a 3030 true I, so, but I, I'm, I'm prejudiced against the 32 Special. It is my least favorite lever gun cartridge ever. It serves no purpose. Because it's so weak? Ballistically, it's identical to a 3030. 32 is? 32 Special? Yeah. Hmm. It's a... Is that the one that's a... Are you like talking if about a 3220 with a neck? No, no, no. no. 3220 is useful. Yeah. But a 32 Special, it's just a that's 3030... A s- that's slightly larger. Oh. Well, we're talking about different things than so I thought it was a pistol cartridge. Uh-uh. The yeah. Special. No. Pistol no. Cartridge. So the 32 Special is just a um, basic, instead of it being a 30 caliber, mm-hmm. it's, it's 30, a 32. 32, and I think it's like 323. You're on it today. math. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically a 8 millimeter 3030. Same powder charge, same velocity, same mm-hmm. bullet weight. Yeah. As the 3030. It serves no good purpose. And I, I actually, I hate 32 specials. Mm. So I would go with the 4082 all day long because it's it's a better cartridge for everything. Now, you say you can use 4590 brass? Yeah. How does that work? So it's oh, a little, you have to size down. it down, yeah. Well, you, wow. could, you could get by with 4570. Can you? you? just have a I thought it was too shorter short. neck. Yeah. It's too short, though. Uh, I don't think it's too short. Mm. It'll work. Don't look at you me. Would, you would have to do some research on it because I think... I'd just do it and in, then try it and see if it worked or not. <laughs> <laughs> then, you, then you have your own Wildcat, the, yeah. the 4082 it, short. I'd, I'd call it the 4079 Tessier. <laughs> I was going to say Gino Tini or something. <laughs> oh, geez. So my, my thoughts, I would go with the 1886 just because I like that action better. I, I like the action better. And I just hate the 32 so much that I would I would go with anything. Okay, Whatever Jason, the option what would you go with? I wouldn't go with either because I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Jason would, would probably take either of them, and then he would just sit in a safe until he sold it. Yeah, yeah. he would never actually use it anyway, yeah. so it would be fine. He could go so, with either. 86 with the octagonal barrel. Yeah, yeah. stylish. Because of that and the, and the action, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. 1886 is I love that action. Yeah. It's kind of like a, what, big 92? Basically. Yeah. It's, basically. It is like an oversized 92. They're, yeah, very, I, very, I very like strong. Them. But very they're strong. also I, they're more rare, harder hard to find. I, I would go mm, got, you can, just for the un- yeah. uniqueness of it. I mean, they, they you can buy like an 1886 like <coughs> Winchester nowadays. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, buy, it won't, be, it won't be that same you know, old style. Yeah, like, and I guess I was assuming these are uh, old. An Italian-made one. But the, you're, yeah. we're talking new guns, so I'd still go with the 18, I actually 18, do have a, an 1886, but it's it looks quite tactical with oh, uh, black. <laughs> it's a threaded barrel. It's, it's black. Barrel. It's a takedown. Hmm. It's, it was probably a, has a red dot on it. Um, oh, gosh. No. The just, sacrilege. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's pretty sweet. It's uh, Taylor's and Company. Oh, yeah. They, they make some they, nice guns. Yeah, they do a lot of the takedown conversions. You know, I, I was at a, a place that doesn't sponsor us that um, <laughs> is, it has quite a good selection, but they have a, 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 a Taylor's by Chiapa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's it's short. It's maybe 16 inches. Yeah, you're talking about gunnies. I've already fondled that gun. Yeah, yeah I have to. I have to. <laughs> it's, it's been around it's a like... block a time or two. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants to, to look at it and touch it, but then when oh, they yeah. see the price tag, no one wants to... I, w- I was, it was like, tempted. It was, was it eighteen? It was about eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred bucks. Yeah, mm. which isn't bad. No, it 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 looks really nice. It, it looks nice and it feels pretty good. It just the balance feels off on mm. that one, and I think it's because it's such a short barrel. Yeah, it, and I think it only <coughs> holds. Is it four rounds? Probably. Probably. It's got a short too short. because it has, ha, you know, because yeah. it's a takedown and it's takedown and then the short barrel. Yeah. Is, yeah. Um, but I, I was still a little tempted. Like if it'd been seventeen, I would have bought it. But at eighteen, I just, I just wasn't gonna do it. So. <laughs> so, anyways, that's that's our thoughts on. 
Yeah. I'm sure that was no help at all. Oh, I think it is. Moving on. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And Dave W., in response to the Carl episode, where we talked about how he almost died, (laughs) Dave Dave W. says... Almost died, You too. almost, almost yeah. died? Almost. Well, D- Dave almost, W. Almost. says, Carl says he almost died. He is too kind. They almost murdered him. <laughs> so. They gave him uh, a bed sore as a souvenir, too. Yeah. Yeah. A second, a second. Cornolio. Uh, <laughs> a second hole. Yes. But, yeah, that's. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Zach from Montana says, I also own a jungle carbine. They are basically a lightened number four with a shorter barrel. And a loudener. And a loudener. (laughs) That's, you know, us Uh, saying that. They have multiple lightening cuts on the receiver, a hollowed out bolt knob, a lightened trigger guard, and many other lightening modifications. He asks, is yours ROF marked or... M47C R O F is Royal Ordnance Factory? Fezzer Fezzac- Fezzacary. Something like that. The Fezzacary. Sure. The Fezzacary. Yeah. Come on, guys. And M forty seven C or something like that. It's a it's a, a factory very famous in uh, in in the English munitions world. Fezzarkily? Something like that. <laughs> Fezzacarly. I don't think he was actually British, whoever it was named after. You think? Hmm. I, don't, I don't think he was. He may have been, but... Huh. And he says, an M47C is Bur- Birmingham Small Arms. Does it have a stamped or milled rear sight? What manufacturer date and bore condition? Just curious about these number fives coming out of Ethiopia. I am thinking about purchasing one, but haven't heard anything. And... Uh, an overview video on your channel would be cool to see. I have been waiting on the NOE mold 314-210 RN 2 cavity or 4 cavity gas check for my number 5. Any news on when the next run will be? I will say, if there's a specific mold that you're looking for, give Al a call. Yeah, tell him. Because, uh, and and if it's busy or he doesn't pick up the first time, you know, keep trying. Yeah. But he, at first you don't he, he values the, the phone calls higher than like an email message. So. Sure. And if you're on your way down from Montana to go to Utah Air Guns, you can just stop. <laughs> yeah. Or from Key West. <laughs> yeah. And he says, he says, any, <laughs> he says, anyway, I love the podcast. It was great hearing Carl and Stan again. I heard somewhere that Carl almost died. I can't um, verify oh. the source, although. Seriously, though, I'm happy he's doing better and also look forward to Mark's Australian voice on news stories. From one UPSer to another, I think Carl may have just wanted to skip out on peak season and is now holding out until spring. <laughs> <laughs> no, in sleeper for us, it's uh, it's it's all the it's same. The same. It's not bad. If you're in package car, I, yeah, I've I've tried doing that, and they came and pulled me out of bed and said, "No, you have to work <laughs> in package car." That's that yeah. stings. So, anyways, I'll, I'll <clears throat> answer his question about the bore. It's better than a rusty sewer pipe, but it's <laughs> not like my Swiss rifles. <laughs> So somewhere in between. So okay, is this a gun that we talked about recently? Yeah, yeah. I'm like the, yeah, the one with I the loudener. The loudener. Yeah, the British yeah. 303. So the barrel isn't okay, yeah, like yeah. in great condition, but mm. it does have rifling. So, so that's that's good. Yeah. Of, course, so, of course, some of them, you know, the ones that have really good a really good bore, still don't look great compared to some of the other other rifles that are out there. Oh yeah, yeah. true, true. I've I've had a couple of really beautiful Lee Enfields that they you could tell the board just wasn't even in great shape it just wasn't there yeah mm-hmm. but yeah and <clears throat> mine had a lot of pitting on it that was like reblued over yeah. so it oh that's right I remember that game. yeah that's why they use the crinkle paint over there yeah. So I, I I don't know if that uh, just hides answers all the pitting and stuff. hides everything. <laughs> <laughs> so Draw part it, of your eel pie while you're painting. Why it, are it the just jungle it. models all have all these features to lighten them up? Why do you want it lighter if you're in the jungle with it? Just curious. Well, because you have that loudener on it. Yeah. So that's to scare away the lions in the jungle. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I think just in the general, lightning things are so that you can you run away around, yeah. from the lions. Yeah, it, it is quite right. a bit lighter. Yeah, it is. I mean, like if you compare it to a number four, yeah, there, the Lee Enfield there's pounds have, well, like, of difference, but it's all about the work. recoil is higher. So they came with yeah. this nice hard puck of rubber on the back. Oh, like to, uh, to cushion the to recoil. cushion it. They should, they should they <laughs> should they should look at the high point. 
They should. With that shock absorber. Yeah, they, they should. They could have learned something from them. They, they were slapping them together trying to get them out for war. And yeah. just yeah. so you well, guys know, lines don't work. I was going to mention the song, that. The song is wrong. But I did <laughs> The song is wrong. All right. Okay. The next one is from Spencer, and he says, Hey, Jason. Woohoo! This one's. That's me. Yeah, specifically <laughs> to you. First and foremost, I just picked up one of the Smith & Wesson CSX pistols, and I have to admit, I'm really impressed. It's no larger than my 365 and about the same weight, but has a much nicer trigger and holds 12 rounds in the same grip length as uh, that my SIG holds 10 rounds in. Hmm. It's got a great grip and is very easy to handle and shoot. The, the CSX does feel very, very nice. Is that the Springfield? It's the it's the Smith and Wesson. Smith and Wesson. Oh, Smith and Wesson CSX. I, t- I like talked to him a little bit about it, huh? and he's like, "I'm surprised you didn't like the trigger." Keep in mind, I just handled one in the store and dry fired it. That was the only one they had. It may have been one that didn't have a great trigger in it, but I wasn't impressed with it. Hmm. And the 365 was way better. But I do have. A CSX mold now, so all you buying CSXs, I can make holsters for you. All right. <laughs> but it does feel really nice. I would like to shoot one. I mean, I, I can't have an honest opinion about the gun until I've actually shot it and stuff like that. But Yeah. He continues yeah. and he says, it doesn't have all the same options as the SIG. So for now, no lights or red dots, but I'd expect yeah. some of them to, to come out in future versions. Since it's selling so well, according to the largest gun store in Georgia, I would expect they come out with the performance center versions with rails and maybe even red dot cuts fairly soon. Yeah. Anyway, my question was, do you have a Cobra for this yet? I'm really wow. looking forward to trying this as a carry gun. Yeah, I All do. right. The answer is yes. Order away. And use... Uh, and use the code, show me the candy. Show me the candy. <laughs> oh, I guess he wrote a little bit more, too. Oh. This is a long listener this is feedback. a long email. All right. So Spencer continues. He says, I'm also glad to hear you joined the High Point Carbine Owners Club. <laughs> yeah. That really should be a thing. Yeah. I did end up dremeling the Hightower Magwell a bit to allow the mags on my 10 millimeter carbine to fit, but now it's working. I can't recommend that enough, especially because it gets rid of that disgusting, sticky gel pad on the factory stock. Who, who at High Point, I wonder, thought that was a good idea? I don't get it. It's gross, and it, it is. is sticky. It is. And it has plastic, like, like plastic wrap on top of it. But Mine, if you pull that off, no. then it... Mine still has the plastic wrap on it. Yeah. That's the way I shoot it. <laughs> don't pull it My off. My son because... was looking at it. I dropped him off to clean the shop this morning. And the first thing he does, he walks over to the high point sitting there. And he grabs that and starts pulling. <laughs> don't touch that! <laughs> no, stop, stop. <laughs> yeah. You know, all I can say is that high point trigger is just the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could get that on more guns. Stan? Yes. I have had worse triggers. Have you really? Oh, yes. Yeah, like a Smith & Wesson M&P. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the original M&P. Yeah, no, that's what I'm talking yes. about. Those, those they original look, M&Ps had like... They, they were It bad. was a horrible trigger. Anything by Taurus? Oh, yeah. Mm, they're getting better, though. They are getting better. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, they were just a little chalky, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chalky? Oh, now, now, <laughs> they're, glass. Now, now they're chalky. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those are the good ones. Now. You want Ch- chalky, ones. just like, <laughs> breaks, breaks, breaks like chalk. <laughs> breaks like chalk. <laughs> Crumbles into pieces and you get a little poof. And that's well, a good trigger. Well, at least it's not a dull shine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. They could be chalky and have a dull shine. Oh, that, that mm. sounds terrible. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay. He says, by the way, high points have the single stack mags in the grip for a specific reason. They were designed to get around the restrictions of the assault weapon ban. Oh, that yeah. described assault weapons as having a detachable magazine in front of the trigger. Well, high points don't. This, the magazine is in the grip. The mag is also single stack for the same reason and because they couldn't fit a double stack in the original grip without making it too chunky. Yeah, true. Like a, like one of those uh, masterpiece arms. Like, oh, gosh. Like my, <laughs> yeah, those those grips are like yeah. a two by four. Mm. Yeah. So what, what high point needs to do now 
is take that carbine and make it modular so it will take an AR stock oh, yeah. and an AR foregrip and stuff like that <laughs> and make it fit Glock magazines. You know, I'm kind of surprised they haven't done that already because everybody else does that. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, it's because their single stack mags are so good. <laughs> but, but, they don't want to get away from that. But when was the last time you saw them innovate or change anything that they're already doing? Yeah. They're, they're, I just get the the idea that they're the, a company that's like, we know the market we want to go after, and it's it's at the bottom of the barrel, and that's we okay. Want, we want people and that find bricks <laughs> to be sexy. Yeah. <laughs> Those are our people, but and that's all they're going for. And, and there's no reason to innovate or change or do anything else because they're satisfied with it the way it is. Yeah. Well, that's not entirely true because their new design <clears throat> that they hinted at that should have come out already. It's got like a threaded barrel and You're not I think talking and stuff. the 380 with the compensator. No, I'm not talking about that one. <laughs> their their Yeet cannon. Huh. The one that, you know, they came out with or they, they alluded to al- allowed the public to choose the name and then it became the Yeet cannon and yeah. And we haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, define yeet. <laughs> I I don't. Mark needs to be here for that. Mark loves the term yeet canyon. Yeet is like a a throw. Okay. A throw. Yeet? Yeah. Uh, to throw. Like in, in you or I would chuck something or chunk it. Uh-huh. I like to huck things. And he he likes to huck. You're things. a hucker. And I'm a hucker. I'm a chucker. Taco, what do you do? What do you? He yeets apparently. Okay, so he's a yeeter. <laughs> a yeeter. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just aware of the terminology. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that kind of redundant? A throwing cannon, a chucking cannon. Well, they had a, a they had a, they had throwing cannons. Isn't that? They were called trebuchets, weren't they? No, no, no. They like actually there, there, are, there are actually <laughs> cannons that are for throwing things. Let's see how many tangents. We're it's, it's typically like Tangent a line of... throwing cannon. So you would have this little harpoon thing oh, that yeah. you would shoot Throws across line, yeah. and it will throw the line to another ship mm-hmm. or, or into a whale or something <laughs> like that. And so, it, yeah. So, so there are, are okay. throwing cannons. So it huh. kind of sort of so almost what makes you're sense. saying <laughs> is the new high point yeet cannon is going to shoot harpoons. If they did, I would probably do buy a website. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do have so a website. They can afford a website. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and it's actually not that bad of a website, from what I hear. Okay. Like it, it's not you know from the first half I still of the need 1990s. To go on there and order me a hat. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, another company that comes to mind there too is Caltech. You know, they promise the moon. <laughs> And they, they, I was actually going to bring them up. I like they Kel-Tech. came out. I like they stuff. New hand stuff. Stuff. But yeah, you can't shot buy shot. anything they make. And and you roll <clears> the <throat> dice as to whether you're going to get one that's going to work good. Really, have you had yeah, you want a, you want yeah. a good trigger? Keltec makes some great triggers. You know what? <laughs> I had a Keltec <laughs> PF9 that did have a good trigger in it. In fact, Koski was over at my house once, mm-hmm. and he saw it sitting there, and he's like, "Oh, let me see that." And he's like, "How much do you want for this? I'll buy it right now." I'm like, "Really?" He's like, this has a great trigger. Those are hard to find in these. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, you can't have it. <laughs> they're, they're pretty terrible. But they came out with a new aluminum frame pistol. Okay. It's held together with Allen screws. It, it looks like a typical kel It's just made out of metal instead of plastic. Instead of plastic? Yeah. Oh. And what caliber is it? I, I don't even know. It was a kel so I didn't, I, I quit. <laughs> you went, oh. Oh. <laughs> and I thought, man, that is the ugliest oh. piece of... Oh. oh, it's Caltech. Keep going. <laughs> All right. Continue. Caltech is Back. super innovative, which uh, I do like about them. They think uh, outside the box. And I, I think I they really come up with cool that. designs. Their execution they, they don't on execute them, them is the best. They should just sell their designs to, like, someone else. Yeah. But, okay. So Spencer <laughs> continues. Still great guns, though. I don't know if I'd say great. I would say... Functional. Serviceable. Yeah, still f- will insert functional guns, though, for what they are. Mm-hmm. I'm debating getting a CMMG Banshee in 10 millimeter, and if I do, I'll probably sell off the high point. But for now, it's sure. doing a, gr- a great job. Yeah. I'll, I'll say functional job. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> we'll we'll right. edit. No, I'm just kidding. They're all right. Yeah, he says, keep up the great work and the great podcast. Spencer in Smyrna. Smyrna. He's in Glock country, and he's talking that that highly of a high point. <laughs> mm. 
They're going to run him out of town. Yeah. All right. We have another one from Kevin. And this one said, I think this was Kevin C. I enjoyed the discussion about winter camping. In my 40s, I would camp in the northern Minnesota with friends. We would ski in, pile up snow, and hollow out a Quincy. Hmm. I think that's how you pronounce it. The snow had set for two hours after piling while we cooked and ate dinner. One guy would put on the rubber rain suit and carve the inside. We carved two little alcoves and lit candles for a while to warm the inside, but not while we were sleeping. If it was really cold, we would block the entrance with a loaded sled. So that's like the snow caves that we were talking about. When All I'm saying is I ain't camping with anybody in a rubber rain suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, otherwise you get soaked. If you're going to do that in yeah. all-in-one like outing, like yeah. go build it up and then hollow it out. When you're hollowing it out, you're laying on your back, you're getting like yeah. soaked. And so that's probably a way to keep dry so that you, or drier so yeah. that you don't, uh, although you'd probably sweat like crazy. So. In a rubber suit? <laughs> yeah. You're getting wet anyway. Yeah. You know, during our, the scouts, back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we now. would just circle the wagons and <laughs> <laughs> instead of doing a, a dugout, we had it would take a tarp. Mm-hmm. You just dig kind of a hole and then put the tarp over the top. Yeah. Way less work. Yeah, but that doesn't insulate. Yeah, there's no insulation there. Well, then we throw a little bit on, you know, to sort of insulate it a little bit. You know, back when I was a youngster, (laughs) we would just kill a woolly mammoth (laughs) and all out the inside. (laughs) (laughs) inside. (laughs) We'd just burrow in like a bunch of possums, (laughs) eat our way in, and we'd stay warm. Uh, took the words right out of my mouth. There you go. All right. Okay. Last one. This one's from Charlie Foxtrot. He says, Mr. Taco. Yay, he's talking to me. Yeah. Sir, love the cast and your what I did a lot in parentheses in guns. And your. Well, we got a special one yeah, for you this, coming this up, Charlie. Yeah, this one's going to be just for Charlie. And your YouTube channel is a favorite. I'm getting into the 300, 300 blackout, mm-hmm. and I'm and I've heard very good things about the Taco Bullet 300 subsonic design. Would you know a commercial supplier of the powder coated Taco 300? Since I'm up to my Carl in alligators here in the Florida swamp, I don't have time yet for casting and powder coating. Thanks. Keep on tacoing. So I am a little jealous if he's living out in the Florida swamp, really. At- all the great shooting opportunities he would have with an air gun and the iguanas. Yeah, iguanas, That pythons. looks like so much. No, 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 they can keep the pythons. Oh, I'd shoot a python in a heartbeat. Yeah. Make yeah, a but, nice belt. But they don't shoot. Go in the, the bush and you grab them by the head and drag them out while they're trying to bite you. No, you use a shotgun and take the head clean off. <laughs> <laughs> Goody. That's not the stuff I see. But that iguana hunts, that sounds like a good time to me. You know, next time I go to Florida, mm-hmm. I'm going to book an iguana hunt. You oh, should. Yeah. I, I seriously want to do that so badly. And then I want to cook one over a, you know, on a, a spit, a, a, on a spit yeah. over a fire, you know. Mm-hmm. I have no idea if they even taste good. I hear they do. They but eat it's them all the time like in South America. That's what they yeah. say. They they taste like chicken. I've not eaten it, but <clears throat> I know people who have. So I managed. And they the, said it tastes kind of like chicken. That's what they always say. Yeah. Well, well, it's kind. It's kind of like gator. You know, yeah. gator's kind of, kind of chickeny with a little bit of shrimp flavor. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's got a little kinda bit. Kind of like that. So I, I would think iguana would be the same way, but yeah. I'm, I'm hoping there's some in the next year or so ones out there. Yeah, well, there maybe are. a little Burger, Burger King flavor if you get a, if you had got a factor <laughs> off the beach or something. Like yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. And and they're kind of like so when I was down there in the Keys last year, I was looking at them and they behave a lot like squirrels. Really? In that you know you get on this side of the tree and it's trying to and it moves around. Oh, yeah. Oh, iguanas do. Uh, yeah. Hmm. It was kind of weird. How big are they? Big. Well, there's there were some that were that long, you know. They'll tail, they'll get so they'll get over that and they make that nice they'll get over six were, feet yeah. easy big with the tail. Inven- it, so is this like uh, out of control down there? Is it like throwing oh, yeah. logs? Yeah, yeah. They're <laughs> they're yeah. They were introduced by Everybody. people's pets who escaped, or they I'm tired of this and let it out the backyard. 
And then, yeah. so and it's same an with invasive the species now, kind of like hogs. And, and in they the down south. destroy the golf courses, which is a horrible thing. <laughs> How do they destroy, destroy golf courses? They, what do they burrow like gophers? Or well, when you're golfing and there's twelve iguanas spread out on the green <laughs> and. Four. Yeah, <laughs> they don't move. Yeah. Oh, okay. How rude. They, they grab the, the they form. grab the the what do they call them? The, the golf ball. <laughs> and they run off with it. You know, they're they're terrible creatures. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just that they're an invasive just species, invasive. <clears throat> yeah. and and they're yeah way overrunning everything. Yeah, yeah there's so it's, many. Of it's it's weird because you'll be sitting at a traffic light anywhere, and they'll there'll be flattened ones along the pavement, and you'll have one just sitting next to the road. You know, every time you stop, you, you, you just look across around. the street. Uh, some of them don't even wait; they'll just go out and and you flat. <laughs> See, and you flat them. That, that must be down to the keys. I've been in the, the, in the Fort Myers twice, three times in the last four or five years. I've never seen a single iguana. Yeah. So in the keys, we saw a lot of them, and I think even up towards Orlando, huh. and then some other town. We were at some other town. We saw a few. Never heard of some other town. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's right on. It's, it's, it's on the west down. coast. Look it's, it up. Uh, Near Tampa? I don't Tampa know. Beach. I couldn't even tell you. It's in Florida. I've never it's, seen it. It's near where my aunt there. lives. It's uh, Oh, where your aunt lives. Okay. Yeah, so it's near yeah, there. Get on the Instagram <laughs> and follow the Python Cowboy. A homie doesn't play Instagram. Oh, then you're missing out. <laughs> <laughs> There's better things on Instagram. All right. Are there? Okay. Back back to his question <laughs> about Future. the the taco bullet who are we oh, talking yeah. about yeah Charlie oh, yeah Foster. he's like shooting oh. gators or something right he, yeah he, well, <laughs> oh geez so he was <laughs> he's too busy with the gators to cast he's, his own bullets he's, so he's, he's wondering he's if there's to, a way to, to, his to buy those yeah. so he's ankle deep in gators yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, okay or, or maybe knee deep <clears throat> i think it was a passive aggressive uh, solicitation of bullets from you taco no i think he <laughs> wants you to sell him some bullets but here's here's what after getting his message, uh-huh. I I did call up Al and mm. and talk to him for a bit, and so Al I think it sent some molds I think maybe today to uh, Montana Bullet Works or mm. uh, and they're gonna make him do a run of those taco bullets for Al to sell. Nice. Oh. So Al cool. should have some on the NOE site <clears throat> at at some point, and that would be a good way to support NOE and try out the bullets. Cool. And that is it for listener feedback. That's it? That's all? I feel like we're just getting started. Yeah. We've only talked about 20 different subjects. (laughs) And there's only been like three letters. (laughs) What we did with guns. Let's hit some sponsors real fast first. Okay. Last of them. Mag holder. Use coupon code. Get in the van, I have candy. And it will save you is like 22% it's a lot. or something. Yeah. It's like a decent amount. Yeah, it's a it's a chunk. But yeah, horizontal so, mag carriers. And, and new belts. New belts. New belts. Mm-hmm. I actually kind of want to try one of those new belts. And we are, Ricky and I are working collectively on a new project that... Uh, is it top secret? It is. Can't so tell you, you can't anything tell about it. <laughs> <laughs> when can you tell us? About three weeks. Okay. Oh. <laughs> See, I'm okay with that now. So. Okay. But I gotta know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not mine to disclose, <clears throat> nice. even though I designed it. Hmm. Okay. And Concealment Solutions. Yes. Use coupon code? Air Candy. No, that's not mine. <laughs> Something with candy. Show me the candy. Show me the candy. <laughs> and it will save candy. you what? 15%. 15%. Yeah. What, if, what if there's someone out there that saved your phone number from the flash mob and they call and order something, what would you give them? Like a special discount from the flash mob days? How will I know? Because they'll they say can flash tell mob? They'll tell you, yeah. They'll say flash mob. <laughs> sure. Come try, on. Try it. See what make, happens. Make it worth their while. Try it. See what happens. I dare <laughs> You'll probably give them 16% off. <laughs> <laughs> he charges oh, five extra Jason, dollars. <laughs> Jason was a little... Well, let's say miffed. It was. It, well, we can get into that again okay. another time. Yeah, yeah. That right. was. That was. That's in the past. Let's forget. It, it about was it. fun and frustrating all at the same time. <laughs> but I got my. I got Tommy back for it. Really good. Did you? I had him convinced that the FBI oh, had right. me interrogated oh my and gosh, everything, yeah. and <clears throat> and then when I revealed to him that no, that didn't. Ever, I was just screwing with you for the last mm-hmm. week. He got real quiet and he looked at me. 
I wasted prayers on you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, um, I did launch two new holsters. Uh, they're re- redesigned. So there is a new ASP 3.0 and a new ASP 3.1. Those are the Al-Qaedax appendix carry holsters. I love those, man. I- I'm an ASP man for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, aren't we all? <laughs> the the 3.0, so they're all... You, you should make a t-shirt. I'm an ASP man. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good, or, wouldn't it? Or put it on your license plate, ASP man. ASP man. <laughs> With two S's. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, I'll bet it's not taken. Uh, probably not. Uh, probably Utah not. may not issue that either. But, <laughs> yeah. you know. Anyway, sorry. So anyway, they're all they're optic ready now. So if you've got a red dot on your gun, it will fit in one of these holsters. The 3.0 has like a there's lots of different names from a wing or a claw or whatever that helps to keep it tucked in to your body. But this one has two. It's kind of modular. It has two wings. No, but you can. <laughs> it change. can fly. It you, has wings. You can change the length of the, of the wing, so you can have a little wing or a big wing. Gotcha. <laughs> anyway, so those are those are, and they're actually on sale right now. Awesome. No discount code needed. Just President's Day sale. Big yes. President's Day sale. Because uh, yeah. we're going to celebrate the presidents. Yeah. On the twenty-first, especially Brandon. We're just celebrating. It's not for him. Oh, it's not? It's for the dead presidents? It's specifically George and Abe. Oh, just George and Abe. Because their birthdays were both like within a week of each other. That's technically what it's for. The rest of them don't matter. I stand corrected. I don't even think about anybody else except for George and Abe. Well, I think it's Teddy. Yeah, he's all All the time. (laughs) (laughs) Uh. Anyway, go check out the website. Lots of cool stuff on there. There's, there's some new Kydex patterns and colors. So if you look at the holster upgrades page, you can see some new options there. Got a, a new uh, Muddy Girl camo. Ooh. You know what you ought to do? You should get a gold-plated looking Kydex. Okay. A gold metallic what a, shiny. How about, or how about titanium, titanium nitride? Nitride. That's kind yeah. of what I was thinking. One that's kind like of you could shiny and uh, chalky. <laughs> 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 you, you could call it the taco special, <laughs> and then with Boing. if they ordered it with the gold-plated hardware, uh-huh. you could call it the Trump forty-five special. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I don't think that would motivate anybody to buy one. <laughs> Gene might. I might. Okay. <laughs> I could do a special run for just for you. Just for you. <laughs> run of one. One. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on to, to what we did with guns. I'll start since you're all looking at me. <laughs> I took my FX. Well, I was delivering product to discount or discount. That's not where I was. I was at Utah Air Guns mm-hmm. and decided I was going to recite in my FX. My dream instead line. of the unreasonable hundred yard zero. You know what? I just wanted to do it, and I was happy that I did it. I'm like, hey, I'm hitting what I'm aiming at. That was cool. Now I need to put it back. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was there, and I'm a controlled environment. Anyway, I haven't shot that gun a whole lot lately, other than that one day shooting out to 100 yards. I forgot how much fun and how nice that gun is. It was. I was punching, putting pellets through the same hole over and over and over again, and it was just a joy to shoot. Mm-hmm. So and they have the Diablo pellets in stock. The Hades. The Hades. The, it's the Diablo's the brand. Hades is the the model. Yeah. Yeah. So I picked up some Hades in twenty two and in twenty five. I need to go there and get a couple sleeves, maybe. Yeah. So while well, they got them, it's, they were out of them for a long. Yeah, time. Yeah, squirrel hunts coming up. Oh. Yeah, but other than just banging out product, that's about all I did with guns in the last week. Gene. You know, this is going to sound crazy, but I haven't done very much with guns lately, <laughs> yeah. except just knocking them out so I don't have to take them up to Wyoming. Yeah. I, I did shoot. You worked on my gun. I did. I did. Yeah. I, I finally uh, got it up to the top of the the, the layers and uh, got it uh, re-glued and everything. It looks good. I just got to actually put it together now. What, yeah. what, what gun and what are you doing to it? It's a Swedish Mauser. Okay. Um, six five ninety six. 
94? I don't know. It's a Swedish Mauser. Yeah, it's, well, are you, it's, the, are you talking about the cartridge? Is the, this? the rifle that I'm working yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, it's, I think, was it model 30... 38? 38. Is it 38? 38, okay. 39. I can't remember. Keeping track of all the different surplus Whatever. models. Oh, uh, it's it's Swedish. Yeah, it's either yeah. Anyways, and, uh, it's not the ninety six. Okay, so yeah, for sure from yeah. Sweden. Yeah, yeah it, it is Swedish. <laughs> but it is anyways, that, that one's kind of a, an interesting little gun. Like yeah, that one, and it's yeah. gonna. Did it have a crack in the stock or? Something? It was a split stock. Oh, yeah. so yeah. Two complete. pieces. Yeah, yeah. So I actually had to pop it apart, clean all the old epoxy off. He had to clean up my mistakes for oh. attempting to epoxy it myself, and I, I, I did all the right. I gotta charge him double now. I did all the right things according to the instructions, but he followed the instructions. Yeah. Who does that? <laughs> JB yeah. Weld, man. Well, I epoxied it. He, he did with use acker glass. Yeah, but uh, I just after all these some... years, it was still soft. I was taking my thumbnail and sticking it in it and going, Yeah, it's kind of weird. Why is that still soft? That's that's not normal. <laughs> I was just yeah. sheet metal and screws and Frankenstein stitching yeah, back together. Yeah, don't, don't use sheet metal screws. Use Torx ones. Okay. Use the Torx head deck same, screws. Same sheet metal over oh. the crack oh, there you go. and screw it in <laughs> like Frankenstein stitches. Oh, hmm. my gosh. <laughs> yeah. No. So that that one is a, kind of a unique little little gun because I bought it. And I got it really cheap, inexpensively, and uh, because it was ones that they had drilled and tapped the receiver, and it was like in the process of being, I don't know, sporterized oh, or okay. something. Where'd you get that one from? I, I believe it was Classic, <coughs> Classic Firearms. They okay. had they had a set that, and I can't remember if it's a Samco was uh, in the process of modifying them, like drilling oh, okay. and tapping, but then they just got abandoned and so they had you know the holes in the receiver which if you're a surplus collector that like really drops the the value yeah. and and they had a cracked stock is either cracked or split stock and so that's why it's so cheap hmm. so i took that and i got it re-threaded because they have that one weird threading for shooting the little uh, wood shredders, wood, yeah, shredders. yeah, attach the wood shredders and stuff. So it now has half by twenty eight threading on the end. Nice. And uh, Gene's working on getting that stock fixed and uh, a uh, scope base. Oh yeah, yeah. We yeah. put a. Uh, I think it was an EGW scope base. Yeah. So so they're basically. they're about the only place that makes a small ring Mauser scope base. Yeah, um, it's going to turn out pretty sweet because I think I'll have a. You know, a low-mounted scope that will uh, and then uh, mount a suppressor on it. There you It'll go. be one of wow. the the few suppressed uh, six five by fifty five Mausers. Yeah, out there. Yeah, and at least in the U.S. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> at least here in the Washington. Although I I haven't seen they, I haven't seen have. any in uh, like on YouTube or anything. Oh, uh, that's because the speeds they don't actually do YouTube. <laughs> 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 they have speed tube. all right stan what have you done well i have been busily looking for part number 47 for the ruger american ranch rifle and 300 blackout which is the conversion from the flush magazines to the air ar max yeah (laughs) because i mean who doesn't need a bolt action that'll take 30 rounds (laughs) <laughs> I do. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> so I'm trying to find a place to order it. And apparently, YouTube's has told me that I need to call customer service and order it from a, a person. <clears throat> but I was uh, distracted during the week uh, because we went to Disneyland. I know. Oh. In the Republic of California. Why would you do that? <clears throat> <laughs> uh, granddaughter. <laughs> no. The, yeah. who's, the, how old? How old is she? 29 See, you not even 20, in years yeah. yet? What was the point in that? She's not going to remember it. Yeah, but Grandma and Grandpa will. Hey, I might be dead tomorrow. Who knows? That's she's she's going to have therapy issues about giant mice. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. She's not going to have any idea where that came from. Uh-huh. Now, this little gal, <laughs> she, she knows all of the, the uh, characters and everything. It's just She had a blast. 
Yeah. And it was cool to see it through her eyes. Everything was new. Anyway, uh, so I, I had to kind of refresh my memory on what you can take into California. <laughs> it's it's freaking. I only have one. Basically well, two nothing. Guns. Nothing. Nothing pointy. No. <laughs> or sharp. I have my Glock 26, you know, and it has to be in a lock case, and the ammo has to be separate. Yeah. And you can only have 10 rounds. I could have taken my Blackhawk in 41, uh, <laughs> 41 Magnum. Yeah. But that's all I have that only holds... Held ten or less. <laughs> well, actually, I could have taken my three. But yeah, you can't, you can't. You can't carry <laughs> my bolt gun. I could have taken that. But yeah, but you can't carry in California. Can't carry. No, yeah. I had, so it's only it's a just, misdemeanor though. That's what I was gonna say. It's say only, what? It's, it's only, only a misdemeanor. misdemeanor. It's only a misdemeanor. If, you, if you're caught carrying concealed. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So my rule is, if I find myself in California, is I will carry. I'll leave my knife at the border. <laughs> but I'll carry whatever gun I've got, and, and I'll just deal take, with the consequences if the they came up. Yeah. Oh, we learned. Yeah. But no one told that me is, that. I, this I, is not legal <coughs> advice. It is not legal advice. Y'all do what you want. Gene I'm just said. Saying, this is what <laughs> but I <Gene> said. do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm not an attorney. Yeah, so that's all, that's so, all we did. Yeah. You're well, you did something know, else. That's that. <laughs> Thought we went to Utah Air Guns. Oh, that was we last week, though. Yeah, but we didn't. That was well, after that we recorded. It was after so, we recorded. Oh, so it counts. Stay yeah. it counts. Oh, okay, there you yeah, go. Yeah, we took Jim. Jim Heff for full finger. So, finger. so tell me who and is, Carl. Who, who is Jim Heff? Hef, 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 he he uh, don't you he's know? He's a famous who he author. Is? He's good friends with Steve Rinella, my <laughs> he's well, been, almost <laughs> blood brother. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's a biologist for the for. Arizona. Arizona. Oh, Game okay, fish. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Lives down in Tucson. He wrote the book, the infamous book, Deer of the Southwest, yeah. which is out of print now, and he showed me a, a, <laughs> a screenshot, screenshot. Like, of one of yeah. Amazon for $890. I just got 700 wow. for mine. Did you really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Dang. laughs> yeah, right. I need to put mine up for sale. Mine's um, autographed, you know. So. Yeah, but it's going to be back in print. So he, he, uh, he's been on the Meat Eater podcast, though, twice, oh, okay. three times. Cool. Yeah, and yeah. of course he's been on ours more and, times. Who's this that. other guy you talked about? Steve Steve Rinella, meat eater fame. Oh come you on, Jim. <laughs> Jim. <Jeans. laughs> no. Oh, I, I, I cur- think I, think I I've curse seen your his... darkness, but I I will not. I, I think I've heard of him. Oh. I, I think I, I think I saw one of his, <laughs> his specials or something. Yeah, no. <laughs> his specials. I, no, I just... Is he the guy that fishes for the crazy fish? He well, he river monsters lives to it? hunt. No, that's oh, not him. Okay, yeah, I don't he know. He hunts about. to live, and he lives, lives to, to hunt. hunt, or lives to hunt, hunts to live. Oh, okay. So he's been all over the place. One of the field ethos guys, then. Yeah. Okay. The what? <laughs> <laughs> no. So, but the thing is, and the, my tummy, I relate to him on a lot of levels. <laughs> What's your tummy like, got to do with anything? I like to eat animals. Too. I like meat. <laughs> I eat meat too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, All right, I'm just trying to st- stretch it out, you know, because we're we're. So, Stan, what did you what did you think of all those air guns and my air guns? I liked them. That crown is the crown pretty nice, is phenomenal. Huh? Yeah, they they were all really fun. Um, it's just yeah, it's a whole new dimension. Uh, up up close stuff, out to hundred yards, uh, it's hard to beat them. I was yeah. uh, when I was there today shooting. There was a, a guy there with his daughter. And they're like, well, can we shoot this one? And I think they were looking at the what's the that budget bolt action that they were talking about? It's like three hundred and fifty bucks. The the Air Venture Avenger. Yeah, yeah. yeah and they were one. shooting that, and his daughter, who was she looked like she's in her early twenties, maybe. Mm-hmm. She she sits down, pulls the trigger, think she, oh, I need one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. And, and uh, I can't remember the guy who was selling them. I looked at him like, that's all it takes every time. That's all it takes. Now, my, I did have one question. How much is a tank? So you, you say you buy one of these, your, your crown. Mm-hmm. What other accessories? Obviously, good glass. You've got good, really good glass on yours. Yeah. And they are accurate enough to deserve that yeah. Yeah. good glass for sure. But how do you pump them up? You've got to have a tank, too. Yeah. How much does the tank cost? So you can get little compressors that will fill up the gun, mm-hmm. and those are... They, they're about three to 700 bucks. This is one of the f- the f- no, oh. no 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 no. It's a oh. it's a little miniature air compressor, mm-hmm. but huh. it's it won't fill like your scuba tank, but it'll fill your gun. It'll okay. take a few minutes to do it. Wow, it's electric. It's electric. Yeah. Or you get you get the carbon fiber like scuba tanks. How much are those? Those are about start about five hundred bucks. Yeah. And then you have to buy the 
fill station that goes on that, those are about 50 or 60 bucks. Yeah, some of the tanks come with the, well, they the, come the with valve a... and the fill station. Oh, really? But it's, it's all built okay. in. Like the ones that they have at Utah Air Guns have. See, anytime I, on. and I haven't talked to them about them in a while, but when I talked to them before, they never had the fill station. And they came with the regulator, mm. but not the fill station. Yeah. And how much are the bullets, the projectiles? Depends on the Depends caliber on the and the style. But Say twenty twos. You can get just just plain old pellets in twenty two. You get five hundred of them for like seventeen. How about bucks. the Hades, you guys are talking. Those are like nineteen. Yeah. For how many? For five hundred in twenty two. Okay. And they in twenty five caliber, really well. you get three hundred, and they're yeah. about the same price. And of course, you want to spend the money on on good pellets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because otherwise so you, you don't. Get that that same accuracy. Yeah. So if you buy like a crown, three cents a pellet or something like that. Yeah. It don't don't put the game <coughs> old stuff in your crown. Yeah. yeah don't well, don't go, go to Walmart of, and buy the daisies. I have a bunch of daisy BBs at home. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Load them in a shotgun shell. There you go. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Anyway, so they are they mm -hmm. are a little bit expensive to get started in them, but once you're into it and you have the, your basic stuff, it's so stinking cheap to shoot. A lot. Yeah, you can just shoot and shoot and, and shoot. Yeah. And as far as the tanks go, you can, you know, look at yard sales. Yeah, you for can scuba get tanks. used stuff. You know, because if I it's have, already, if it's aired up, if I you've have, got an air tank that's full of air, <laughs> you know, say you're at a yard sale and you pick one up for five bucks. Yeah. Which, you know, it doesn't matter that you can't fill it up. Which I, this, I actually still have my, my scuba tank. Yeah. I, I'm sure it's out of hydro, and I'm sure it's out of inspection. And that's that's <coughs> kind of some of the problems that you'll run into with the used stuff is a lot of places if they're out of if they're too old, even if they've been, you can't recertify them. You can get them retested, mm -hmm. but they won't they won't fill them just, yeah. just for liability. And I get, yeah, I get it. It's really dangerous. They they fatigue. Yeah, yeah. That's what they say. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> from the scuba world, yeah, they do. They're very. You, you got to be real careful with it. Now. Yeah, they, they can. They can. Last thing you'd want to do is have your tank explode underneath. <laughs> yeah, underwater and not in the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All anyway, right, Taco. My turn. I'm afraid to ask. Abbreviate it. What did you do with oh, guys? Cool. <laughs> I've done so much stuff, but. We'll do show and tell, but the listeners can just hear. So That's, That sounds like zinc. It is zinc. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It so, tastes like zinc. Mm. <laughs> it's light. Shiny. Yeah. Those so I did some casting with zinc, and zinc comes Why out first uh, because it's free, available, you know, that kind of stuff. Where do you get zinc so for free? Wheel weights. So you know how oh, most wheel yeah, weights yeah. are not lead anymore? They're yeah. made out of, usually made out of iron uh -huh. or steel or zinc, zinc <laughs> or aluminum. Really? Yeah. Oh, there's, there's a lot of zinc wheel weights out there. Wow. And so in places like California where you can't get lead, mm -hmm. then you can actually get zinc still. Hmm. So you have two different designs there. Yeah. So uh, one of I actually, <clears throat> both of them were prototype molds. So... Hmm. Uh, but, I was going to say, these, I've loaded up some dummy rounds in the 308. The bullets we're talking about are 300 blackout subsonic uh, bullets, bullet molds. Usually they weigh, like the round nose one, weighs about 220 grains. And so, being zinc, the bullet or projectile actually weighs about 60%. So yes, They're much lighter. Yeah, they feel hmm. lighter. And so, instead of a 220-ish, it's about 137 grains. Have you fired some yet? Nope, not yet. I'm curious okay. to see how they'll... Uh, yeah, with changes, like with accuracy and stuff like that. And you, you yeah. need to change your charge, too, don't you? you well, you yeah, so here's, here's the tricky thing about the zinc bullets or projectiles is that those ones are big, right? Yeah, they're And long. light, so they're big and light. Yeah. And so... so you going to tumble or... I, well, and you've got a certain amount of resistance well, in the barrel. Well, you got so. a little bit of resistance. The zinc is a lot harder. I don't know if you could tell. It's... You, you can drop them and it doesn't really dent. Mm -hmm. So It has kind of a chalky finish to it. Mm -hmm. well, well, no, it doesn't. You know, it's kind of shiny, but uh, it's, what's, what's but the dull. term? Kind of dull. Shiny dull. but dull, yes. Yeah. Yeah, if and you, they if you, taste chalky as well. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, so the tricky part of, of that is that your, your case capacity decreases because the bullet is so long. It's like a 300 mm -hmm. uh, blackout subsonic bullet, but it's got the weight of a really lightweight 30 cal, like a, 
you know, 140 grain. So if you take 140 grain load data, it's not going to be exactly right because that bullet is sticking into the case. So it has, you know, some smaller case capacity. So I got to figure out uh, what what charge so, to use. So how much do they actually weigh? You say 135? 137. 137. Yeah, 137, 138. And that would normally be a 200 grain? 220 ish. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, wouldn't you just use the 130 grain data? Um, no. No? Well, because you've got a lot of the bearing bullet is, surface. Is, is, oh, it might be too too much. You'd, yeah, you'd yeah, yeah. Be, uh, compressing it. Yeah, so if you were to take like 140 grain load data, then that bullet sticking in the case, decreasing the overall case capacity. So mm -hmm. you could in, increase pressures that way. So I just got to figure out some starting loads to play around with and then, you know, without blowing out my guns and stuff. Well, but so is there, is there anybody else that is casting with zinc? There are a few people casting with zinc on, okay. on YouTube, but then, you know, of course, YouTube has been purging channels and videos. Right. So I currently have two channel strikes. So, and it was, yeah, that the video I did on that prototype steel mold where I talk about it and stuff, yeah, that got me a channel strike. So wow. I can't upload any videos for the next little bit. But, <laughs> yeah. So I, I did some zinc casting, and I, I actually ordered some AR-type stuff. I maybe got a little bit carried away on the Bear Creek Arsenal site oh. because I clicked on their, like, deals yeah. for... I've been looking day. at those too. <laughs> and uh, you got to be careful. You like you should duct tape your wallet closed before looking yeah. at the uh, You know what? I, I've had some experience with Bear Creek, and it's good stuff. Yeah. I haven't been disappointed it's, with it's anything It's at least I've as good from. as Anderson or Delton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the things I found on Bear Creek is they had some $200 complete side charge uppers. Mm -hmm. So that's the BCG. Those were the same ones I was looking at. Yeah, that's and it wasn't okay. the plastic handguard one. It no. was a free float uh, no. four end. I've, the the build I did with my neighbor for his first AR build, yeah. that was one of the ones that we did for him was a, a Did you ever shoot it? No. Well, it's the same guns that were the same receivers we used for the yeah. Skywalker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for, the for little, those yeah. little... Solo Single guns, shot whatever. or is bolt action, or bolt, bolt action, action pistols, AR yeah, pistols. Yeah. yeah. So, but you never shot it to see what it was like. I'm curious to see what see what a reciprocating bolt would be like. Um, I it has just, shot them before. I just didn't shoot that one. I see. Yeah, it but, just sticks out a little bit, kind of yeah. like a. It it works as a as like an a AK deflector also. <laughs> yeah. Does it really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's it's kind of interesting for two hundred dollars. I figured, I mean, if anything, I could make a video of it and just to see if it's crappy or what decent. What caliber did you get? Uh, I got both. Uh, so a three hundred blackout and a, a five five six. Yeah. yeah. That's I I I don't know what was going on. Wasn't even thinking about it, but the other day I was in the shop working, and it just occurred to me: I need to build a three hundred blackout pistol. Which is funny because I did, and then I had. A, a friend come in the shop that was and then picking up it. a holster and was talking about how he almost bought one and I was like, well, what was it? He, a 300 blackout pistol, but he's 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 a copyright attorney, but he's starting a new business. Anyway, long story short, he's like short on cash, so he's like, I showed him this gun and yeah, how much you want? I told him he's like, do you need it right away? I'm like, no, whenever. He's like, I got a watch I need to sell, so I so I can I'll have some cash. He's like, but. As soon as I sell that, I'll have about forty grand. <laughs> I'm like, okay, your watch collection is different from what most people have. Yeah. So, so he I sold his watch, and I also saw that they have some three hundred and fifty dollar complete ARs. So the rifle wow. with the it, upper and much? lower. They're three hundred and fifty dollars. Oh wow! The, without the lower, the right. No, with the lower, the complete, complete, complete rifle gun. for three hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. Mm. And it was the side charger one, so I, see. I thought that'd be kind of. A I've I've done a couple of those side charge uppers from them, and I've granted I haven't put a whole lot of rounds through them because they ended up going down the road, but I haven't had any issues at all with them. Yeah, they also had an AR-10 for six hundred and sixty dollars. And did you buy all of these things maybe. that you're talking about? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I was going to say, did you leave any for us? I have because... to check that Net6 new gun thing and see where I'm at. Well, but. the uppers don't count. But, you know, an AR-10, That's and all the Bear Creek Arsenal stuff is, like, guaranteed for life. Yeah. As long as as long as the company stays in business, right? They've been yeah. around for but they, they have years. They have been yeah, around for, for a bit. A while. And, but if, I don't know, 
I I kind of wanted to test out some of this stuff and see if it's if it's good yeah. or bad or if it's just okay. Well, Taco, you you've got a lot of really nice guns, but you're also not a gun snob. Yeah. So if it works, it works. Yeah. If it doesn't, if it works, it works. And you know you can't you, you can't argue with. <laughs> <laughs> no, you could always replace the parts that, you know, if, if yeah. that barrel is not no good, then you can buy a different barrel, or you could actually send it back to them and have them replace it or something. But you could replace the barrel with a nicer barrel. I, mm. I have some, you know, Excalibur custom barrels on some of my ARs, and mm -hmm. but if a Bear Creek Arsenal barrel works, it yeah. works. So I, it, I just it I'm what really you're... curious about it, and I want to test it and see how, how it does. Yeah. It all depends on what you want to do with it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, anyways, I ordered that stuff. I got a Timney trigger that mm -hmm. in, in the AR. I found that on sale. Nice. It was about a uh, little under a hundred bucks. So nice. Ooh, for a Timney. Huh? Yeah, for a Timney. Very so nice. I got that. I'm gonna try that out. And so, where was where was this Timney on sale at? Uh, <laughs> cannot divulge it's, that information. It's not on sale anymore. He's working on a project. <laughs> secret. It's a top secret <laughs> project. <laughs> I'll let you know in about six a, thirty weeks. days. <laughs> but so, I also helped uh, my friend uh, build an AR-10. You have mm -hmm. friends? Yes, and multiple. He has a lot of friends when it comes to, hey, can you help me build this? It's like, hey, you have hey, tools. I, I need I need to cast bullets. Can you help me? Yeah. He's got friends like you wouldn't believe when it comes to Yeah, this. I helped another friend. This, I mean, I've been busy in, this last week with the uh, AR-15 build, and it turned out pretty nice. Uh, I did some 300 blackout loading, loaded up uh, about 400 subsonic rounds. We should go shooting. We should go shooting. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. we're I'll not help shooting you right now. Those. <laughs> yeah, we you're should. good friends, Dan. You bring the guns. I'll just I'll just show up. You'll clean them afterwards. Uh, uh, as much as you do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give it the taco cleaning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I also loaded up some nine millimeter ammo, about seven hundred rounds. So nice. I'm I'm ramping up to go shooting because the weather is just about to be really it, nice. It's just foggy enough out there to get stuck <laughs> yeah mm, depends on where you go but yeah, yeah it, it, it's but getting there i also have i think i loaded up was it four different loads for the 270 so that's what you were talking i gotta about. You go shoot 270 yeah i need to go i need to chronograph and then group these loads to see if you know any of them are good and yeah that that rifle i'm starting out from scratch that's like I've, cool. I've never loaded 270 before. 130s <laughs> yeah 130s at 3100 feet a second that's kind of the standard yeah that's i i have a bunch of the hornady soft points <clears throat> mm -hmm. and i bought some hornady soft point blems on mm -hmm. uh midway usa where i got i don't know maybe 800 of them mm -hmm. wow yeah that's, that's quite awesome. a few and then I've got some some of the Hornady 145s, the ELDXs. Nice. And some ELDX blems from Midway also. Awesome. Wow. So I've got like tons of these 270 bullets that I've been, you know, intending to shoot in my little Wolverine, 277 Wolverine. Mm -hmm. But I figured a 270 would kind of be awesome to have. So you have like the weaker AR version and then the... Do they make uh, uh, 277 brass or do you have to... Yes, they oh, make it. They, they, uh, they, they I believe right Hornady ran a batch for MDWS, like mm -hmm. the Mad Dog Weapons. Mm -hmm. com. Yeah, and uh, also uh, Starline carries it. Yeah, yeah you love, can get it on Starline. I love the six point eight. I, I mean, my father in law is a two seventy shooter. My dad was thirty out six. But is, is there any word on what the military's going with? They, they say know. it's a six point eight. But do we know what? They've been talking about changing the military cartridge for like 10 years. I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, so I mean, 5.56 five, just makes too much sense for what they're doing. So I won't believe it but, until they yeah. actually and start I'm kind using of hoping it. They do, and then anything, they'll, anything they do is then they'll, be slow. Then they'll sell yeah. all the surplus stuff real cheap for us. They'll sure. cut it in half first, though. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. They'll put it through the shredder for a yeah. bullet before they'll sell it to mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. What else, Taco? So this isn't exactly gun stuff, but I've been listening to the 299 Days book series on mm. on Audible. Yep. So that's that... By uh, Benito Pappendorf. Yep. By what, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Tate. Tate is his author yeah. name. Mm -hmm. We need it's, to get that guy on this podcast. We do. And, we do, for and, sure. 
yeah. interview. Well, and, and just, just so you know, it, it's me. I'm in the book, book seven. Ooh. Me and Carl and uh, Tommy and Travis are in there. Wow. Nice. We play a, a pivotal role in the whole plot line. Probably the most you, important. You deliver a package. We, we, don't have, <laughs> deliver a package. <laughs> we don't have any lines, any any uh, you know dialogue, but we're in there. Mm. Kenny Barlow, curse you, is a sniper. Kenny? Mm-hmm. Kenny, he's a sharpshooter. And Nick Moyes gets an honorable mention. But Kenny actually has wow. dialogue. And I didn't even make it. No, nope. you're wow. nothing. You're wow. dirt. Yeah. Wow. You're you did, insignificant. You didn't, didn't survive the, the... Thanks, Glenn. The apocalypse. <laughs> so... Next but time you, know, you need something taco, from I mean, me. It, re- it resonates. Oh, it's it? like crazy. There's it's so like, many things that he talks about in this fictional book the scariest that are thing, like happening like now. Yeah. The scariest yeah. thing is he brings up the fact that there's trillions of dollars out there in 401ks. The government could just go, we'll take that. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. like that. Just IRS could say, you know how great those rules were for you? Eh, we changed our mind and just change yeah. it. Just absolutely just. Seize it. Take it. Well, they won't do that because they just print more anyway when they want it. <laughs> hmm. Well, that's funny. That's why you got to listen to or yeah, you gotta read, listen to read the or listen to the, yeah. the book. It's it's pretty interesting. You make it sound like I haven't. We'll have you. I read the first couple. But there you go. <laughs> yeah, I've I'm got on the whole series. Uh, I'm on book five. So. Are you good? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's a good series. I, I like it. Good on you so, for listening to it. Yeah, it, it makes you think a little bit differently, though. Like. I mean, obviously, it's fiction, but uh, based in there's a lot of a lot of facts in there. Yeah, it's I, I won't say prophetic. It's but, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's kind of fun too. Listening to foreshadows very or, reasonable stuff. Listening or reading to a, or reading a book from uh, someone who's a gun guy, and so some of the details he talks about the specific gun models. Yeah, and, and things. And he gets them right. And he gets it right. <laughs> so it's. It's really interesting. As opposed to other books. But also the... the bad guy cocks his, the hammer back on his Glock before he shoots somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I always do that with my Glock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we are out of time. I know. Which, is, which is okay. Cause well, we were going to talk about the, the, the topic. Do you want to say anything about that at all? Maybe we can... Well, we wanted to talk a little bit about staying sharp with your with training and stuff like that and what do you do and taco says it's getting warmer he's loading up getting some ammo what do you because i've been sh- i've shot my air guns a lot i haven't shot my handguns very much i have a bit in the last few months but not a lot mm-hmm. um but i i'm gonna go shoot at the the range at discount guns and ammo in springville twice a month they have a, a fun shoot fun shoots and I'm in the a, middle of the week, I can't it, make them. Yeah, uh, yeah. But those appeal to me more than like when I was doing the IDPA stuff where it's like you have All to register long. three weeks in advance. And yeah, there's 120 guys shooting and there's 12 stages and you're there all day long. You know, you wait for an hour to shoot for two and a half minutes at the most and then yeah. wait around. I mean, it was fun, mm-hmm. but it took all day. And so I'm going to go do... I'm going to go do some of these fun shoots to See, I, I, I work care. on the moving and shooting. I've, yeah, exactly. I've shot a lot more in the past. Uh, we've done the Mag 40 four yeah. times. Uh, yeah. We've done, I've done AR. I've done pistol. I've done long range, ultra long range with I would like to do some. I'd like to take a long range class. That would be. We'll have to find okay, someone so else. Okay, so Jason, they first off, teach me how to you got to actually scope. like tighten yeah, those screws Kyle passed down. away. <laughs> Who uh, did? Kyle Hill passed away I don't last know, year. I actually. don't know who that is. He's the uh, full, uh, oh, what was it called? Um, well, we, ha- we had him on twice. Um, hmm. I don't think I was there when we did. You might not have been. But anyway, he was Green Beret. He still is Green okay. Beret, but he passed away. I had didn't, a didn't he build him. AR-10s? No. No, he didn't build AR-10s. He was... He, was uh, he the guy that you took your class from? Yeah. On the, oh, okay. stuff? the pistol, uh, we, I did an AR course, carbine course with him. Uh, then the long range and ultra long range. And he was a medic, so I was going to do the, the medical. Oh. That's another thing, too. I'd love to take a, you know, a combat first aid course yeah. or a trauma course. Why combat? Well, just... Because they're, yeah. they're because you go call shooting it, with guns. Don't call it combat. So just call like, it trauma. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. So holes, tourniquets. Well, so I've things been like through. That. I've been through a lot of um, basic first aid and wilderness first aid, mm-hmm. and they cover all that, all kind that stuff, of stuff too. Oh, well, there you go. Hmm. To a degree, they yeah. don't get into specific. Like if you get shot, this is, but, but a puncture wound is a puncture wound. 
to well, some degree. Well, pneumothorax is different. Right. And it's well, talk, chest yeah, yeah, specifically. But they talk specifically about those oh, things. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Mm. So, I'd like to take a first aid course. I think skills for anybody yeah. is good. And, you know, it, it's, yeah. it could save a life. I actually now carry a tourniquet. I've got two tourniquets. I, I've gotten them for my, my daughters, for my wife. Yeah. Um, you know, in school shootings, the mass shootings, most people don't die from the they bleed gunshot. Out. They bleed out. Yeah. And so, I mean, th there's even uh, some people that are putting tourniquets in schools. Yeah. So, anyway, but training in general, I felt more confident carrying my, my sidearm with me <clears throat> when, I, when I had training, when I was doing the MAG 40s and stuff like that. Yeah. I think we need to do more of that. Maybe learn how to run and gun with an AR too. That's that's what I've been missing out on is is the running and gunning. I, mm -hmm. I even with my ARs and stuff like that. But uh, going back to the first aid, I've been teaching um, preparedness classes at church during the week, and we did one on just like food storage and how to get started. I just mm -hmm. did another one on mm -hmm. building the ultimate bug out kit, and I showed them my stuff, and then I asked them what. What what else do you guys want to learn about? And first aid was one of the things that they wanted to learn. So we're going to put together a first aid class for our church group. And um, well, count me in on that. I'd I'd like to to do it. If you do it on a weekend, I'd like to to learn about there, it. I've I've yeah. learned that people will show up during the week, but not on the weekend. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe but, you could uh, just do a, a private uh, session for me. Okay, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know who I am? We'll turn the lights I know, down low. Uh, no. I know Jim, I know Jim who knows <laughs> Steve. Who knows Steve Rinella. <laughs> uh, that makes a difference. Anyway. And, and Jim did promise to get Steve on the show. He, he, he did, <laughs> didn't he? He did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, sure. He did, and I'm holding him to that. There you go. All right. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's just kind of a brief overview of, of that, but we, we all should be thinking well, about Well, I would a love to training. hear from our listeners what, if this are specific things they do to try and stay sharp on their everyday skills with a, a handgun, whatever, self-defense type of, of stuff. I, real, I, I mentioned fire. doing the uh, MAG-40 qual course, which is yeah. the CFBI qual course. Is yeah. mm -hmm. It's a great way to get quantitative uh, assessment of where you are yeah as far as you're shooting in not real stress but a little bit a little of time. bit under you're under a time pressure yeah. so it does yeah. does things to you but it's, it's all of the different disciplines of shooting the different uh, holds and yeah different distances and things like one-handed weak-handed mm -hmm. so yeah that's something we ought to do i'd like to do that next week Ta taco if you can set that up for us and oh sure set up all the targets oh and sure get and bring, everything ready. And bring the ammo I'll, I'll, and tell I'll, us I'll, be, I'll bring a can of uh of gun cleaner and uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, cleaner. I'll give it a uh a premium taco clean <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> all right guys we're out of time so until next time stay safe have fun be nice and take somebody shooting yeah. and clean your guns <laughs> I go to Disneyland. <laughs> Why are you looking at them like that? It's just a box of tissues. Created with pride by Americans who are blind. Well, what kind of stuff do you find at NPS? <laughs> I, I didn't look for blind tissue paper. <laughs> it's not. It's just Kleenex. It's fifty cents a box. Hmm. That box That's like right sandpaper. There. Doubles as sandpaper. <laughs> well, look at the size of the box. You can buy the big boxes at Walmart for a buck. <laughs>